Hello Ratbags, it's Joe Plays Games. Do you know my channel is based mostly on survival games? When I cover early access, they are normally early access survival games that are coming to console. That is my main focus, to give you lots of news and information about these games coming on Xbox One and PS4. There is abundance of survival games on PC, a lot of them are trash. I want to give you the top 30 that I think are available now to buy. These aren't games that are closed behind doors, alphas, these are all games you can go out and buy. Whether that is Xbox, PS4 or Steam, they're available. They may be early access, they may have lots of problems, but I still think they've got potential. And there's going to be lots of names you do recognise that may have more survival elements in it than you actually think or even knew about. So, come with me, it's the top 30 survival games, 30 to number 25. In an infinite galaxy. There are two options, survive or die. And there you go, that encompasses Imperium Galactic Survival, job done. No, of course not. Number 30, I'm kicking off with this one. It's been on Steam over three years. It's developed by a very, very small team. It took heavy influences from Minecraft and voxel building. Of course, No Man's Sky came out only a year after this sort of debuted or was in production and I think a lot of comparisons can be made to it but this game is very much more almost bordering on simulation there is a whole host of survival aspects you can do and exploring a huge massive planet in a procedurally generated world or universe is absolutely fantastic but look at the things you can do you can build your own ships you can build your own designs a little bit like space engineers but this has got much more focus on survival mechanics i say simulation though because every single aspect of the vehicles that you build the bases that you build have got really complex systems that you can get to grips with once you get to grips with it though, I'm assured it's a really fun, fantastic game. This was recommended by one of my rat bags. Big shout out to Cory. And take a look at this footage from an up and coming YouTuber I found. Welcome to Imperium Galactic Survival. And here we are, we're up on my capital vessel. And I thought what I want to do in this part is, I think I want to go and visit Anish here. So just from that very tiny clip, you can see how involved it gets. You can build your ships to go through space, travel to other planets, and it's absolutely phenomenal, the detail and stuff that you can do with this. Of course, it has got very basic graphics, it has to be said. It doesn't look the best. It's definitely from technology from a while ago, or certainly they maybe need to improve that. But... That's how Seven Days to Die started out. It was almost a blocky clone of Minecraft, but with much more adult and much more detailed survival settings. And now maybe this game is going to go through that same process of improving its graphics over time and maybe improving to the point where it will be considered a really very fantastic survival game. That said, it already is. It has got one of the highest ratings out of any of the games I'm showing you in today's video on Steam. Overwhelmingly positive scores. Loads of people like this game but it's a bit of a cult classic i've never seen anyone do any footage of the game until i looked it up today maybe it's the graphics maybe they're too dated maybe it's too complicated and maybe it's just too much of a simulator rather than just a survival game but i still think this has got bags of potential it's going to be a slow process i can't imagine them fixing anything or getting up there next week it's still very much early alpha but definitely one to watch for the future imperian galactic survival Number 29 is Mad Max. Yes, Mad Max. There are obviously big similarities between survival games and open world games or RPGs, but not many open world RPGs really combine that sense of survival elements with your thirst for water. But not just water, you need gas. And that's a big component of Mad Max. That's what sets it apart from something like an Assassin's Creed game. It, for me, is a survival open world game bit old now, it's over three years ago it came out, but still a fantastic game. I remember playing a good chunk of this when it first came out, but I never really finished it, I never got really to grips with it. It has all the elements that you'd expect from an open world game, but like I said, that first for going around getting water and getting gas is really crucial, and that's why it's number 29 on my list. Apart from that, of course, it does have loads of crafting elements. Building up your car is integral. The game really is a love letter to vehicular combat, made by Avalanche Studios, they are big in the game at the moment. They're going to be working on the Rage 2 sequel. So that's what they're up to with all the car combat and stuff that's going on in that. So we know they've got a really good history of making the Just Cause games. And you can see all that in the combat and explosions and over the topness. 
but Mad Max does have a bit more story to it. It's also got some decent combat, and that's something you don't find in a lot of survival games. They tend to be very, you know, basic combat style, but borrowing heavily from Arkham Knight and Arkham style games, it does give it a little bit of a taste of like a boxing match. Sometimes you feel like you're in a UFC match fighting some of the bad guys in this game. So if you've not picked up Mad Max, you can get it pretty cheap nowadays. And I'm pretty sure it's on like the PSN Now and the Xbox Games Pass at various times. So go and get it. It's been available on PC, Xbox One and the PS4. Mad Max number 29 on my top 30. Space games seem to feature quite heavily in the very beginning of my top 30. Maybe there's something about space and survival that just doesn't gel as much. The idea of having this technology where you're flying around in spaceships, then all of a sudden you're digging around and trying to get dirt and rocks and wood, maybe that's why they don't take off as much. But this game, Planet Nomads, has been around for about 18 months now at least. I got a chance to play it last year. It is what you'd expect from an open world survival space game. You land on a mysterious crash planet and you have to go around finding resources to build yourself up. What this offers unique and very similar to Imperium Galaxy is the ability to build and craft and make your ships. There are all different types of blueprints, templates that you can build, but the building is really the core aspect. So if you enjoyed the sort of unique experience of running around a really different vibrant planet, gathering lots of resources, building up a fantastical base, then Planet Nomads is for you. Progress has been slow at times with updates, it is in early access and it's only been in early access just over a year so it's probably got a good another year before it's at least anywhere near coming to a full release and I'd love to see this on console because I think it's quite colourful and vibrant and it's not that bad looking, I do think it is a lot more polished than some of the other games I've seen. So lots of weapons, lots of items to go and craft, machines to build, lots of unique ways to travel around the planet that you're on and different biomes that look really colourful. No Man's Sky is kind to set the bar despite all the problems for that game it's a pretty decent survival game and of course you're going to see it appear later on the crafting in it can be a little bit complex and i definitely think they need to work on that to improve how easy it is to craft or just understand some but the vehicles are pretty cool and the biomes are really lush and pretty looking without maybe that hodgepodgeness of no man's sky so let me know what you think about planet nomads like i said steam early access now and it's pretty cheap too we happy few is number 27 it's a game that has polarised a lot of people. When it first got announced, we were astounded by some of its story elements. It looked fantastic. And then we were told it was a survival game. As it came forward to release with all the problems it had, it then got transpired that it's more of a story-focused RPG-style game. But the survival elements are still there. You need to eat and drink, otherwise it really affects your health bars and your action bars. And so I do deem this a survival game. What this does do well is implement side quests and missions, and you've got wonderful current characters. Unfortunately, it is a bit buggy, and it does get a bit repetitive. And the promised version of where you can have story, which is very sought after in survival games, to have actual proper story in it, it is a little bit lacklustre. You're meant to have three characters arcs to go through. In the end, you played the main one for a good chunk of the game, and the next two characters only have a tiny fraction. There is meant to be a sandbox open survival mode coming soon in an update. We happy few, number 27. So finishing off our countdown this week is number 26, Rend, a very much focused on team survival. You join three factions, or one of three factions when you join the game, and there are certain points throughout the month where PvP is enabled and you will go and take each other on. That's in case of taking each other's bases out. There are zones where your PvP will always be on and you're vying for control of this tree. It's very much fantasy based, the creatures look absolutely gorgeous, very very out there for some of them and there's lots of components to this that I really enjoy. It's got some problems with player base at the moment, there just doesn't seem to be enough players filling the servers and maybe the idea of joining a faction and everything you do really counting towards getting prepared for war day doesn't appeal to some people. But this is really popular in private servers. I know lots of people that have their own servers running for their own communities. You've got all sorts of different ways to play this. There's all different ways to level up, get weapons, magic, items, melee, and you can see the variation in the combat as well as defense items you can build. I like the idea as well. It's got a shadow realm where you can pop in and out of and you'll defeat even different types of enemies. Loads and loads of gorgeous little biomes as well. And like I said, that PVP zones that you can come across mean that you've always got the option to go out there and battle other players if you want it otherwise stick close to home 
when it comes down to them times when it is PvP and you're meant to be taking each other's bases on, that could be a bit of an issue for some people that just can't seem to get on at time. And there are reports of players not even being able to get on their server to help defend because of course the servers are full up occasionally. So Rend has got some work to do in making sure that it appeals to lots of people but also means that it gets, it keeps its people that are joining the game. So whether or not that means increasing servers or coming up with some other way to help with the factions. Definitely really unique. I like the idea. It's really trying something different. I got a chance to play this a good year ago in fact when it first came into an alpha it's out on steam early access right now 20 versus 20 versus 20 combat really is one of these games you're going to be playing with lots of friends hopefully or making some friends it's going to be that focus on surviving and crafting and learning recipes and learning blueprints so that you can build your player up better for that war day that is going to approach really unique really really pretty cool go and check out rend So there you go, that is the top 30 games kicked off, 30 to number 26. You can see me, I'm playing Minecraft, I was playing this on Twitch last week. This is where you're going to find me playing a lot of these games. So if you want to see me play all these survival games, get a little heads up about what might be coming in next week's show, go and follow me, descriptions down below. I'm not being overly critical, I'm not spending hours you know talking about these games it's meant to be just give you a quick brief window into what i think are some good games out there some of them got real potential some of them been out for a while so you should know all about them but definitely go and check them out let me know what you think about them or if you have played them what you think about them i am Joe plays games i'll see you for another top 30 survival games next saturday and every saturday Big shout out to all my patrons that have made this video special. This top 30 is sponsored by my patrons. They give me the freedom and the opportunity to make content I really want to make. 